Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey exploring the world of Netbird. To install in your Proxmox VMs, we get to install the newest version of Netbird, fresh off the press. Netbird is built to manage WireGuard and provide a console for managing your network. In this video, we do two installations of Netbird, one for the laptop to access the Netbird control panel and one for your Proxmox VMs. If you are considering using Netbird for corporate use, you may consider installing Netbird in your Proxmox servers for cloud management. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Proxmox expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dota Kinesi European accent, but fear not, he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. As Josh mentioned, we are going to be installing NetBird in our laptop as well as in VMs in our Proxmox server. The first installation will be to get a console that you can access from the laptop. The second installation is going to be to create an Ubuntu VM and to install NetBird on that VM be able to connect the laptop to that VM. Also, that VM is going to be put on an IP range where there is no access either from the Proxmox server nor from the laptop. It's going to be in its own completely isolated IP range. The instructions for this video is available on our blog. This is our blog. We will provide a link to this blog page below. We recommend that you follow us and do the same on your side. Netbird provides excellent documentation. If you click on this link here, it will take you to their documentation. And here you will find the instructions. They cater for both the Debian, Ubuntu, flavor of Linux as well as the Red Hat flavor of Linux. They also provide installation to Mac OS, as well as installation to Windows servers as well. So you can manage the networking using NetBird. In addition to that, NetBird is an open source project. Kudos to them. And this gives this project a lot of credibility. Netbird works with WireGuard. WireGuard is built into the Ubuntu kernel. There is even a documentation here if you want to self-host. But when you see how easy it is to use their cloud, you probably won't want to self-host. But you can. They do provide the documentation if you need that. So let's start with the installation on our laptop sudo su or sudo su dash to elevate to root. I am already root, so that's fine. Then we need to do an apt update. Our machine is fairly up to date. We then need to run this to install these. I've already installed it, so it's going to tell me that I have the latest version, but that's fine. You then run this command. I'm not going to run this command, so it's copy. I'm not going to paste it. As I've already done this, in order to test that I had this working, I've already run this command, but that's what you need to do. And then you need to go and run this command. And I'm not going to run that as well. I've already done that. And then after that, you need to do an update. There's two ways to install this, with or without the GUI. So if you only want the command line, this is how you would install it on the server. But 
I would like to have the GUI, so I'm going to run this command. Right, we've done that. Now you need to run netbird status. And it's telling us this is the command you will run if you are installing it on your laptop so that you can connect to the cloud server and manage this from the cloud. If we look in our documentation, you will see that is what we have here. I'm going to copy the link address. And we will now follow this and do the installation from here, from the browser. We are creating a login. Now you can use your Google account or your Microsoft account or your GitHub account. And we are now in. After we created our login, you need to go and open your emails, the Gmail email. And here you will find the welcome message. You need to click on this button. I've already done that. And then go to this URL here. Let's open it in a new tab. And over here you will see login. You click on there. It will now use your Google credentials. If you use Google, I did. And it found my Dell laptop. You need to click on setup keys. Let's give this a name, servers. And we will now use this key which will expire in seven days. I'm now going to revoke the key that I generated. To do that you just click on this button. And now we can continue with the second part of the video, that's section 3. We are now going to create an Ubuntu server. It will be an Ubuntu VM in Proxmox. So let's just go there. There's certain requirements we need for this to work. Click Create a VM. Let's call this 195 is the ID and there's a name I'm going to call this Ubuntu 1. Create it in this storage, that's up to you. Whatever storage you have, you may use your local, but I have Two terabytes here, so I'm going to use this one. And I do have a Ubuntu ISO image, there it is. <clears throat> this is fine. CPU, one socket, give it two cores. 
Now this is important. In order for network to work, you need at least two gig of RAM. So I'm going to give it four gig. Network can stay the same. Confirm. Finish. It's busy creating the VM, as it says here. We just wait for the padlock to to go. Right. Now we can start it in the console. Now we do an Ubuntu installation, so enter, continue without updating is fine, done, networking is fine, 109, done, done, continue, I like to make the server name the same as my login as I have many VMs and it's useful to know which machine I'm working with. Provide a strong password. Enter. Interesting to see that they do also provide Docker, but I prefer to do it my own way. Now the installation of the VM continues. Now one of the disadvantages of the way we installed the Ubuntu server is that we did a fresh install every time and that takes up a lot of effort and a lot of time. We've decided to stop this installation and we are going to do it again but this time we are going to use a template. Now if you don't know how to make a template I'll give you a quick show how to do that. You click on your VM, you right click and you say convert to a template. It's as simple as that. Now that VM becomes a template and if you look here you can see I've already got a Rocky and an Ubuntu server template. So all I need to do now is clone and we'll give this 195 as the VM ID and we will call this Ubuntu one. Now you need to make this a full clone, not a linked clone. That's the only difference. And it's busy creating our clone. And you can see the padlock. And now that we have our VM, we are ready to start. Click on the VM, open the console. Hit the start button. I've logged in. I need to sudo su dash to be root. We need to get the IP address. IP dash A. A server has an IP address, the last number 108. Close this. Let's get back to our instructions and we open a new terminal. And we're in. Now we can start. This is the same installation we did on the laptop. So let's run these commands.
I'm now root. Update. Right, we've done that. Next, we need to install CA certificates, curl and GNU GPG. Next, copy this command, next run this command. Now we should be doing an update again. There it is. We've just added to our Ubuntu repository on the server. That was quick. Now we're only going to do the CLI installation. So let's copy this command. We now need to run netbird up. This is going to connect us to the netbird on the cloud. And we now get the URL that we need to open in the browser. And because we had previously registered with the same browser, it has automatically added it. Now we will open the network cloud in the browser. So click on this link. And you can see we've got the new machine added to our cloud. And it also has published a NetBird IP address. Now we are going to have a look at some of the administration functions you need to do in NetBird. If you click on settings, you will find that there's a group called All. And there are two machines connected to that group. These are the two peers. So the two peers will be able to communicate with each other. You may want to create other groups and you may want to create users and permissions who can use which group. Because I am using the same user on the server, I don't need to do anything now. But if you were adding other users, you need to do that. This is a free service limited on the number of users that you can have. You see, I can have up to five users. I am using this for my home lab and five users is more than enough for me. However, if you are using this in a corporate environment, it is advised that you register. This way you will be able to have sufficient users for you to be able to manage your networks and your servers and which users can access which servers. Well, that was a very simple installation. We decided to add Docker instructions for the Docker fans. If you want to do the NetBird installation using Docker, we have provided 
you even with a Docker Compose file here that you can do that. However, we felt that the installation we had just done was so simple that it didn't make sense to add extra layers of complexity to make this thing work with Docker. I am sure you will agree with us that this was a very simple installation. We did provide a link to the documentation if you wanted to do self-hosting. That may be useful in a corporate environment. However, in a home lab, this is more than good enough. We trust you found this video useful. Please give us a like. Please subscribe to our channel so that we can reach our target. Please let us know what you would like to have in the next video. And with that, Josh, over to you. Thank you for watching this video. Exploring the world of NetBird to install in your Proxmox VMs, we got to install the newest version of NetBird fresh off the press. NetBird is built to manage WireGuard and provide a console for managing your network. In this video, we did two installations of NetBird. One for the laptop to access the NetBird control panel, and one for your Proxmox VMs. If you are considering using NetBird for corporate use, you may consider installing NetBird in your Proxmox servers for cloud management. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.